we are back here on the GSMC Baseball Podcast, bringing you our third segment, which is going to be talking about Grayson Rodriguez of the Baltimore Orioles, the fantastic season he has had, and just going over his impact on Baltimore in general. So yeah, let's get into it. So Rodriguez was a guy I've known about for a long, long time. Being a baseball fan, I knew he was a top prospect for a long time with Baltimore. Kind of fizzled out towards the end of that minor league career, and I was always wondering, would he really end up being a significant part of this Orioles' future and this team? Or would he kind of be a bust? You know, I, I always looked at his minor league stats, and I kind of thought, okay, this isn't a guy that is going to be a long-term piece of this of this Baltimore team. Sorry about moving the chair there. Um, but he has done really well this year, did pretty well last year as well, and has just become a big part of this Baltimore team, and has become a big part of their future, their core this year, and just overall. So, yeah, if I'm an Orioles fan, I'm very excited with his performance right now, with how well he's done. And, yeah, so looking at his stats currently, um, you look at last year, I'll, for, I'll start off first of all, um, he had a ERA of 4.35, expected ERA of 4.21, and, you know, you looked at that and you're like, okay, this guy's going to be a solid starter, you know, he'll definitely be a factor in our rotation for the future, but at the same time, not maybe the um, impact starter we expected, not really a guy that we think could be a long, long-term piece, but that has changed this year. You look at his stats now and they are just fantastic. He has an ERA of 3.45. It's expected to right really isn't much higher than that, so it's pretty sustainable. His left on base percentage is 79%, which is very, very good. His BABIP is down from last year, so that's also nice. His K percentage is up from last year. His walk percentage is down from last year. So he's been a fantastic, fantastic pitcher for them. His FIP is 3.55. That's down from last year. His barrel percentage is roughly the same as last year, which is interesting. Max exit velocity is down. Hard hit percentage is down by 4%. So... Rodriguez has become a long-term piece of this Orioles team. As I don't, when, I'm not going to say he's become a, um, a number two type ace, but he's become a very, very good starting pitcher for this Orioles team. Really has stepped up when they needed it, and yeah, has just become a fantastic, fantastic piece of this team. And just overall has been really, really great. Now, this Orioles team has really needed a starter like Grayson Rodriguez because of the injuries they've had this year. I mean, Kyle Bradish being out for the first part of the year, coming back and getting Tommy John surgery after that. Um, he is going to be out for a significant amount of time, and having Rodriguez be able to fill in for that position, be able to provide more depth in this rotation, is very, very crucial. You've also had John Means, of course, be out for the rest of the year, um, Dean Kramer. So having, having Grayson Rodriguez now be the type of starter he has become, be as great as he has, has been such a fantastic, fantastic revelation for this Orioles team. Yesterday, he had a great start against this, against Seattle, going six in the third innings pitched, giving up no run runs, only two hits. So just has become a fantastic, fantastic addition to this Baltimore team and really has helped out not only this year but their future as well. I mean, you're not going to have Kyle Bradish next year. Colton Burns a free agent. You're going to have to pay him a ton if you want to retain him. So let's say, you know, for example, you don't retain him. Who would you have in that rotation if you didn't have Grayson? You'd have Bradish out for a year. You know, maybe Means would come back. Maybe Kramer would come back. Maybe Wells would come back. But after that, you wouldn't really have anyone that could be a significant piece of the rotation, a significant piece as your ace. And Grayson Rodriguez has really stepped up in that number two role, become a great young pitcher for this Orioles team, and has really helped out not just this year, but their future as well. Now, let's say you do retain Burns. You now have one two punch of Burns and Rodriguez at the top of your rotation for a long time long time and that's that's pretty fantastic from an Orioles fan that's something that really is great and I think it is something that really does end up helping out this team for the long term that is something that you can point to and say okay we've got these two guys in rotation for the next five ten years we feel very confident with that and if I'm an Orioles fan I'm feeling very happy with how Rodriguez has done right now um, how great he has been and overall has just been a fantastic addition to this Orioles team fantastic pitcher for this team and overall has just again been such a crucial addition to this team and where they are right now i mean looking at the orioles where they are in this al east they're really in a tough race right now with the yankees who have struggled as greatly but the orioles are still you know still fighting with the yankees for that first place position still fighting to get a significant lead in that in that stand in the standings as well so having a, a starting pitcher as crucial as rodriguez right now is such a big addition. I mean, you look at the AL East currently. The Orioles are in first, but they're only in first by they're only in first by one game. And with how good the Yankees team has been, you can't really count them out till they're gone. So, 
being able to have this enhanced pitching depth that you've had from Rodriguez has been such a great addition and has overall been great. So, again, the Soros team right now, when you look at them, there are a few, there are a lot of holes in this team. Mainly, I would say, starting pitching. Yes, you have Burns, yes, you have Rodriguez, but after that, you have a lot of injuries. Not many guys you can really count on. So, they definitely do need to acquire maybe one, even two starters. If I was them, I would go all in on a pitcher like Eric Crochet. I've talked before how I think they should get Crochet and Robert in a massive deal together. I think that would truly help their team, but that's a different conversation for a different day. I think getting a long-term answer like Crochet would be a really, really nice addition and overall would really end up helping out this team a lot. I think they do need this long-term piece, and they have the prospect capital to get it. I mean, looking at the system, it's incredible. Of course, you're not going to trade a guy like Jackson Holiday to, to the White Sox or someone, but you have someone like a Samuel Basala, who is a top, top prospect, who is blocked because of Adley Rutschman. He can end up being a piece. Kobe Mayo is kind of blocked in that infield as well. Nice power hitting prospect. He could go. So a lot a lot of um, prospect capital that you could flex around if you're an Orioles fan or you are an Orioles executive. And if I'm them, I'm really going all in for a starter. I would also maybe go for a, a shorter piece as well. Maybe a guy like Tyler Anderson from the Angels, Sean Manaya or someone from the Mets. And, yeah, I think that's definitely going to be interesting to see what they do decide. And, you know, if Rodriguez wasn't as good as he was this year, it would be interesting to see where this rotation would be, you know, how what what horrible state it would be in. And, yeah, it would definitely be something very interesting to watch. Now, looking at the Soros team, again, I do think they are the best team in Major League Baseball currently. I think they have overtaken the Yankees. Really, that series where they did beat them in the Bronx, two out of three, really helped them propel to that. They did lose a key series to Cleveland, who has become an amazing team. But I think Baltimore has a lot more just pure talent than them. And as much as I think those two teams are close, I would go Baltimore as of right now. And I think currently they are the best team in baseball. It is going to be tough to fight off uh, the Yankees in the AL East. But at, th at this point, we know the Orioles are going to be the one seed or the four seed in the playoffs. And, yeah, it just will be a very interesting team to watch when it comes to the playoffs, watch for the rest of the season in the future, and just overall what they do end up doing. They also have uh, center field as a need. Uh, they also have center field as a need, of course. That kind of ties into what I was saying of for acquire not just Crochet, but also Robert in that trade as well. And, you know, Cedric Mullins really has not ended up being a nice piece in that outfield this year. Really need to upgrade if you want to compete more. I think that's simply a piece that you do you do need to acquire as a center fielder. So you do have some issues if you are the Orioles, but, you know, having your young players come in handy, like Reese Rodriguez, like Colton Kowser, who we'll talk about later in the show in segment five, as big-time pieces has really, really helped you out and overall has been, you know, it's been a great season for the Orioles. I don't think they're stopping anytime soon. I think this young core is going to keep on going, keep on hitting, keep on being fantastic. And, yeah, just overall uh, a very exciting time for Orioles fans. A great young core they're building here. And um, I'd be very excited right now with what's going on with them and, um, you know, how they are performing. So, yeah. Uh, well, that is it for our third segment here, talking about Grayson Rodriguez and the Baltimore Orioles, going over their season, going over his season and all that. Moving into our third, our fourth segment here, which is going to be talking about the Rockies and their trade deadline. Just going over some uh, some decisions they have to make, who they might trade, and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, we'll be talking about that, and we'll see you after the break. So thanks, and bye. For the best and latest podcast.